By this point, everything that I'm going to point out has been already talked about, and I'm glad it did. I'm glad that there are so many people uniting together to expose what is wrong with today's movie making. In this video, I will be talking about what I think is wrong with the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. I won't be talking about all the strange scenes from this TV show, as you can find them out there on the internet. At this point, many edits have been made and many memes have been forged. First of all, this is a TV show written by two people whose only experience in movie writing was Star Trek Beyond, which was a forgettable Star Trek movie with all action effects and no plot. So you get these guys to write a TV show which is based on the works of a man who not only wrote legendary books that inspired generations, but was also a university professor, a philologist, a linguist, hence why we have very detailed cultural things in his Middle Earth universe, such as races with their own languages. Everything has a reason, from the way they walk to the way they look and talk, to how their cities are designed, and how the politics and warfare logistics and tactics work. You have this really smart English man who wrote a very complex world and then you get these two inexperienced writers to make a TV show out of his work, dump a billion dollars on the production and hope that nothing can go wrong. Well, everything went wrong and the reviews of the audience is showing how bad they failed. So much so, Amazon had to ban negative reviews from their platform, claiming that it's just trolls. On the contrary, I think that we are being trolled by them because they don't even own the rights to the Silmarillion, the book on which their whole show is supposed to be based. The writers have said that it's not a problem and that there is enough information about the age and characters in the book, but in the other books like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. This situation forced them to not use any of the specific characters in the Silmarillion or any of the specific story. So they had to make their own story with characters that are told about in the other books similarly to how you would link stars in the sky, as the writers claimed. The Silmarillion book is said to be not such a happy place, but instead has quite sad things happening as it deals with the hopelessness aspect and people refusing to work together in that time. So far the TV show looks bright and happy, waving the flag of diversity and woman empowerment with every scene. After all, they do market the show towards children as well, so you don't want to make them too sad and you want to make sure you brainwash them with today's politics. So, I have watched the three episodes that have been released so far and I can tell you that I left out of them feeling nothing. There is some good cinematography when it comes to the shots, the landscapes, the way the cities are designed and the effects used, but the characters are empty. I don't care about most of them, and that is largely due to the feeling of being misled. I feel like a victim of a clickbait title. I wanted to watch it because of my memories of the Lord of the Rings universe and ended up in a completely different universe where the clothes and architecture look like the Lord of the Rings, but it's not. The respect that the writers have to the lore ends right about there. The locations and the way things look, but when it comes to the events and characters there is absolutely no care. I understand that you don't have the rights to the Silmarillion, but you can at least try and make something similar and not just create something filled with the atmosphere of the cultural agenda of today's world. That's one of the reasons we explore fantasy, so that we can forget about today. And if we're going to talk about values, the original material wasn't about feminist values or unity through progressive actions and inclusion, Tolkien was an English Catholic Christian and inspired from his Anglo-Saxon culture and Scandinavian culture for the dwarves. Perhaps Atlantis for the elves, so the values in his work are about how love and unity can, against all odds, beat any evil. But his unity wasn't in the progressive fashion. These different cultures that united were their own cultures and allowed to be the way they were, in their specific forms. They didn't have to sacrifice their culture to be part of a globalist plan. The plan wasn't inclusion and cultural enrichment, I would say the values in the original material are of a more Christian nature, since the writer was Christian. But the creators of the series have stated that they want to make a Lord of the Rings story for today's world, so I guess the original laws of this particular fantasy world are thrown down the drain. But let's talk about the why the Rings of Power caused such a controversy with its portrayal of some of the characters in the different races. 
People who have read Tolkien's books agree that there is no specific description of the skin color or let's say dwarves or elves or hobbits, but he does give hints, for example, he writes that elves are of fair skin and have pointy ears. Now fair skin in this case means that it's just not a colorful tone about their skin, no pigmentation. So they're probably really white, similar to angels, since they are immortal and live in a completely different realm to that of the mortals. So in this way it makes sense for the fans to criticize the fact that now we have a black elf to look up to. Not to mention that elves generally in the Rings of Power look like general twats with strange hairstyles. There's nothing otherworldly about them like it was in Peter Jackson's films. In the same way, the dwarves, even if they are short, they are really inspired by Scandinavian culture in terms of their runes, their metallurgical prowess, their ruggedness and facial hair. Even if it doesn't say anything about their color, you can deduce that they are also white because of their Scandinavian inspiration. So it makes no sense for them to have a random black woman because it doesn't fit in logically. Moreover, in the source material, the women are said to be undiscernible to males, having even facial hair and no soft skin at all. In Rings of Power, the black dwarf visibly looks like a woman, having soft skin and well-done hair. So again, that shows the writer's disrespect to the lore, it just looks so out of place. Lastly, the hobbits are based on rural England, the Shire, Hobbiton. The hobbits have very English-sounding surnames, Samwise, Gamgee, Rosie Cotton, Pippin Took, Sackville Bagginses, etc. In Rings of Power, of course, we have black hobbits now, which makes no sense for old rural England. So as you can see, my friends, it is not racist at all to criticize the existence of these out-of-place characters in Rings of Power. On the contrary, it is them who bait us in this race talk by placing them there in the first place. Some speculate that it's a way of promotion in modern times, when there is no talent in writing, at least this race baiting will generate some publicity. Another controversial aspect that was discussed by the community was the lead female character Galadriel. The fans complained that she is a Karen and a Mary Sue at the same time, and for good reason. Even Elon Musk tweeted, almost every male character so far is a coward, a jerk, or both. Only Galadriel is brave, smart, and nice. My impression of Galadriel falls on the same lines and at this point I really dislike the character which is a problem, because if the main character is not appealing then we have to rely on other characters, of which in this show there aren't any. Okay, I'm exaggerating here, perhaps I like Elrond and Durin actually, their interaction was quite entertaining to watch and reminded me of the old movies. The problem with Galadriel is that she is the reflection of feminist ideology. Everything she does is great, her decisions are the best, and men should be quiet and listen to her. She is the best at fighting, obviously better than all the men elves. She gets what she wants without question and without difficulty, which leads to a really boring main role. Not to mention that all this is lore inaccurate. In this age that the TV show is set in, Galadriel is supposed to have a husband, Celeborn, she is not a commander of armies and speak in RPG game terms, she is a mage and not the best melee warrior in the world. She is strong and athletic in the lore, but they just messed up her class because she is a mage and she is wise. In this show she is not so wise and not so humble, perhaps that will change in time because it's supposed to be an evolving character. But to me it all falls apart, because it shouldn't be her role to be a commander marching in the first line of battle, resolving everything with sword and dagger fights. She should be more of a political influencer queen back in Elfland, Valinor, and helping with her magic and telepathic powers when the case needs it. You know, I am not actually a misogynistic pig, because in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, I actually liked Galadriel. She was this otherworldly force of a woman who commanded respect by just being there. She didn't need to be an actual commander. Just the way she looked, acted, her gestures only. It would be like, oh man, this is a powerful angel, even before you saw her powers, which were indeed great. Now in Rings of Power, she just swings a sword and demands respect all over the place without deserving any. She even thinks she is entitled to these people's water on a raft in her special operation to swim from Valinor to Middle-earth. The whole scene is designed so you think that the people on the raft are bad, 
for even debating about whether they should give water to the stranger on their boat. That's how you spot the ideology though. These people think that they should just take what's not theirs for free at the expense of other people who voluntarily work to pay their welfare. But that's another discussion. The main scene for her overpowered nature is where she is able to defeat a troll in a few seconds, while the rest of her men, elf warriors, are unable to do anything constructive to the battle. They are so incompetent. There is one guy holding a torch doing nothing. I mean, these are supposed to be highly organized elf warriors. Have you seen them in The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings? They are like clockwork. Well, in Rings of Power, they are just ragdolls and only Galadriel can do it. And she can do it better than the entire Fellowship of the Ring, which had to collaborate together for a while before they could put the troll down. Galadriel is boring. And I'm not saying it as a misogynist, I'm saying from an entertainment value. It's much more interesting when you see your characters facing dangers and getting more blows in the face before they come back and defeat evil. Or in some case even running away from evil, but to come back later stronger and vanquish it. Galadriel is instant gratification in Rings of Power. She is the strongest, she orders men around, Somehow even this guy on the raft forgets about his friends that got eaten by a creature and now is only focused on following the orders of the matriarchy symbol. That's right, because she doesn't have a husband like in the source material. She don't need no man. Every time she talks, she makes me die inside and make me want to go back and watch the old movies instead, where she was a side character but an important one in the dynamics of the universe. But that's what happens in the new culture of feminist jealousy and white male guilt, etc. It seems the only way you are allowed to bring back an old story is if you bow down to the new rules. You have to desperately take a female side character and make her the main character and also give her the attributes of a frontline male gladiator because that's what's important. Just being a wise mage won't be enough. We have to show men that woman can do it too and better. Disregard the lore and add characters for political 2022 statements and not because you want to add them to enrich the story in a meaningful way. And you smell of rotten leaves? No, I don't. Yes, you do. It really goes to show how creatively bankrupt that these people are. And I say this as a guy that has done this. They always say it's about the kids and they go back to try to hide behind them to say, hey, we did it for them. Oh, little Susie will be able to see themselves, yada, yada, yada. That is all a learned trait, okay? So that is something that you guys, and it could be culturally, societal, whatever you want to call it, your school systems, have a lot of people, maybe young folk that feel as if they have to, uh, their skin tone or their gender or whatever, is the only way that they can resonate with other people and you make them as shallow as you are where that's the only way that they can it can resonate that story can resonate but there's more to being a human being than simply that okay these are the things that we could not control of course and me being black i came out uh this way i didn't earn it i wasn't working for it. this is just happens to be what the 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 color of my um my parents were and then here we go so when that happens you come out the way that you come out. Maybe it's the school education system, maybe whatever it is, is beating these youngsters in the head, having them believe that that is to be the case, that they are very shallow people and that the only way that they can be great is seeing someone else that maybe has the same color. They couldn't be, even if they couldn't be further from the truth, uh, like, excuse me, further, like this different, like think about that. Definitely when you're talking about different countries that this person's from versus me, yeah, we're both black, but that doesn't mean our experience is the same. That, I mean, that doesn't mean that our upbringing is going to be the same. We could be very, very different despite being similar in skin tone. That's because, again, there's more to being a human being than just that, which is why if you tell just a compelling story, people don't have to look to, well, the fact that this person's uh, of this color to resonate with them. There's going to be, of course, and we already know, Folks that are fans of this person that I just pointed to back here behind me, as well as that one over there on the other side, that are not maybe the same color as him. Who cares? Right? There's going to be more uh, things that they can resonate with with the character. And if you are a decent storyteller or a decent, um, yeah, I guess it goes down, writer, I don't know, whatever you want to call yourself, you should be able to do that. But if you have to, lean on these youngsters which is so despicable that they do that well 
you're telling us that you're not really good at what it is you're doing. If the writers have more respect, they would make new stories with characters that fit with the universe. But no, these people know only how to take what is successful and pervert it into their lousy and uninspired vision. Ghostbusters 2016, She-Hulk, Rings of Power, all part of the same agenda. Even Batman. If we don't stand up for Annika, no one will. All anyone cares about in this place are these white, privileged assholes. The Battlefield 5 video game was one of the things which didn't make sense, where they put the woman with the prosthetic arm in the front lines of World War II, but the EA chief creative officer Patrick Soderlund had this to say. We felt like in today's world I have a 13-year-old daughter that when the trailer came out and, and she saw all the flack, she asked me, Dad, why is this happening? She plays Fortnite and says, I can be a girl in Fortnite. Why are people so upset about this? She looked at me and she couldn't understand it. And I'm like, okay, as a parent, how the hell am I going to respond to this? And I just said, you know what? You're right. This is not okay. These are people who are uneducated. They don't understand that this is a plausible scenario. And listen, this is a game. And today, gaming is gender diverse. Well, what I would have replied to her is that Fortnite is a fictional game with, it, with its own rules and World War II is a historical thing which we need to respect. You are making a historical game about World War II and it needs to be accurate to respect the people who fought in that war and sacrificed their lives to protect women and children. I guess protecting women and children is misogyny now. I won't be a full ignorant, I know there were Russian sniper women or reserve units that were ready to go, but that's far away from being the frontline units. And what's the desire about being in that position as a woman anyway? All you do is you are, uh, you are first in line to get slaughtered for a war that was designed by the elites. But hey, that's another discussion yet again. Galadriel is not the only woman in charge of this town. In fact, it seems that only women are right and nice. There's a scene in the village that the elves protect where a woman with the black elf find the incoming orc danger, but no one believes her when she is desperately telling them that they need to move before their village will be destroyed. The disgusting drunk men don't believe her, and then she battles the creature together with her child and brings the orc head on the table in front of the men to prove their point. I am so impressed. Applause for this subliminal progressive message. Women are right and we should listen to them. Princess Disa also tells Durin what to do and how to act, when in a positive way, to welcome his guest Elrond, etc. But still, he is being bossed around by his wife, like in a textbook of toxic masculinity. Oh no, Durin is so mean to his friend. Toxic male. We need his wife to tell him to be good to his friend. Even the hobbits have these little girls who seem to be the only ones curious enough to do anything outside of their cultural boundaries. Such as meeting and taking care of this giant weirdo who came from the sky like Lucifer cast down from heaven. I'm not even joking, this scene is probably occult symbolism. But relax, I know it's fantasy so I can't prove it. But they just seem to be doing this for a while. So anyway, the little girls are right and good and the elders are wrong. The Queen of Numenor is also a black independent strong woman. According to lore, there can be ruling female queens based on their law, where rule would pass to the oldest child of the ruler, whether male or female. But by the judgment of the writers, I bet they would have placed her there anyway, regardless of lore accuracy. I don't want to be mean or anything, but I just want the insertion of progressive inclusion and gender politics to be gone from entertainment whether movies, video games, or music. And I think there are a lot of us who want this. We have expressed our points in many times during the last 10 years or so, but here's how it goes. Step one, the movie or video game makes a script that is inaccurate, full of things inserted for diversity reasons, and not to make the plot better in any way. In fact, making it worse because now it makes no sense and makes us ask a bunch of perfectly reasonable questions. Step two, we ask the perfectly reasonable questions. Step three, they proceed to call us all racist, misogynist, homophobes, and all kinds of phobes. Step four, the fans get more angry and the small minority start doing really dumb things like death threats on Twitter or something ridiculous. Step five, the entire movement gets disregarded and thrown in the trash can of hate speech while the points remain unaddressed and things move on in the same manner. 
Gamergate, Comicsgate, any gate is now labeled on the internet in places like Wikipedia as a hate speech harassment movement. Rings of power doesn't entertain me. Scenes are long where they don't need to be that long. Characters are developed in uninteresting ways and I end up just not caring, not feeling, which is the opposite of what an art creation is supposed to do to you. Even the soundtrack, listen to Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and you will be stuck with the soundtrack in your head for the rest of your life. Listen to Rings of Power and I mean it's well produced because one billion dollars budget, but you won't remember it. So I think this sums up this TV show, it's well produced but you won't remember it, because none of it means anything so far. It's also because they've tried to fit multiple audience spectrums into one, kids and also adults who are nostalgic about the series, but also the gender studies brigade, the feminists and the diversity brigade. Too many checkboxes to fill. This means the product will be an unsincere nor passionate creation because you are focused on the different limitations and checkboxes and not on the art. This is not what I want, this is not what anyone wants, so stop it. And stop bragging about how much money you spent because one billion dollars spent on an amalgamation of trash is just money thrown down the drain. Sure, you gave a job to talented teams of graphic designers and prop teams, but that's about it. You have inspired no one. Congratulations. I think that's all I have to say about Rings of Power for now. It remains to be seen how the TV show evolves, I might make more videos about it as the series continues, so if you like what I have to say, make sure to stick around with my channel. I honestly don't want to make these types of videos, but such is the world and voices like mine have to exist in the battle of ideas. The more voices, the better, otherwise these idiots will think that they are winning and everyone agrees with them when the reality is very far away from what they dream. Keep fighting the good fight for a sincere and authentic world, and not this fake-ass status quo. This is Vostov Vlad, signing out. Look at you now. Commander of the Northern Armies, warrior of the Wasteland.